Welcome back to Cheddar, everyone. Let's get back to one of the big stories we've been following today. Virgin Galactic has been tapped by NASA to organize private passenger trips to the International Space Station. Joining me now, friend of the show, Leroy Chow, a former NASA astronaut. Leroy, welcome back. I don't think I've ever talked to you here on Closing Bell. So great to have you on the show. This is exciting news for the future of space travel, but what's the timeline realistically going to be when we can start seeing commercially available trips to space? Well, as you know, we've already flown uh, some commercial folks to the space station over the years. That has been with the Russians flying aboard Russian spacecraft. What's new about this is now we're talking about using U.S. spacecraft to do the same thing. The commercial vehicle uh, that SpaceX just successfully launched just weeks ago, launched the first NASA astronauts to the International Space Station, as well as the Boeing Starliner, which is also being developed commercially to, to take astronauts to and from the International Space Station. Uh, Virgin Galactic, interestingly, has secured a, 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 a space act, what's called a Space Act Agreement with NASA to you know help them develop a commercial astronaut training program. So that's kind of unique in that previously when we had these paying customers, if you will, flying to the International Space Station aboard Russian spacecraft, NASA would actually have them on site training uh, to, you know, to be familiar with the U.S. segment. So this is the first time uh, we're going to see some a commercial, you know, NASA partner, uh, potentially with a commercial entity to do the commercial astronaut training. How soon do you think we could see that, Leroy? And I have to talk about, or ask about the price tag because we know getting to space isn't cheap. How much do you think these trips will cost? And realistically, will it only be available to the country's 1%? Well, basically, it'll be probably fewer than the, <laughs> the 1% because the, the cost of the rocket is what's really expensive, right? Even SpaceX's Falcon 9, which has brought launch costs for satellites and other spacecraft dramatically down, you're still talking in, you know, the tens, you know, I think the latest price is somewhere in the 60, 60 million or so range, maybe a little bit more or a little bit less. But if you divide that by the number of people you can fit on a spacecraft, say four to, to six at the most, then, um, you know, the, the price is still pretty darn high just for the rocket. Yeah, I'd say if it's starting at 60 million, you've been to space yourself. You're a former astronaut. What can people expect as we all listen to the possibility of being blasted off to space? Well, I think it's it's an adventure whether you're a professional astronaut like like I was, or if you're uh, a paying customer. You know, it's it's the the experience of looking down at the Earth from the space station and looking at the, our beautiful Earth is is pretty remarkable. And and I'm sorry I didn't quite answer your your question about timeline. My guess is uh, this will be sometime in the next three four years because. Uh, the space station, as you may know, has officially been designated for deorbit or for ending, you know, NASA ending its use in 2024. But if we can make a, a, a viable commercial uh, interest in this with things going on, then there's more pressure on, on the U.S. government to keep, keep NASA uh, running the space station. Larry, we've talked about Virgin Galactic before on the show, and they've mainly been focused on suborbital space flight for the last decade or so, sending paying customers to the edge of space and then bringing them right back. Do you think the company is up to the task of actually taking passengers into orbit? Right now, Virgin doesn't have an orbital capability. They've only demonstrated their suborbital capability. Now, there's a related Virgin company called Virgin Orbit that's developing uh, small satellite launchers that would launch satellites into orbit. It's not out of the question that Virgin could someday offer orbital trips to space. I'm not aware uh, of them developing an orbital spacecraft at this time, but you know, they're, they're kind of tight-lipped, too, about things, just like some of their competitors. And so uh, that may be in the works. I, I really have no insight into that. Sure. Uh, how about this? We know NASA selecting Virgin Galactic, but why do you think it wasn't SpaceX or Boeing who was developing this crew capsule to take people into orbit? Why, why them? Well, I don't, I don't think NASA is asking Virgin to develop a crew capsule. NASA is just asking them to help them put together a commercial astronaut training program and what would that look like. Um, you know, by my understanding of the Space Act agreement, it's not a commitment necessarily by NASA that they're going to uh, buy these services from Virgin. I think it's more, hey, let's work together and see what this is going to look like. I'm, I'm not even sure if any money has changed hands or not. A lot of the Space Act agreements are not compensated, so uh, they might just be working together to figure out if there's a business there and if NASA can can use it. 
You know, Virgin Galactic has said they've sent about five people to space on two separate test flights. Do we know how that worked out? Can you tell us more about that, Leroy? Well, yes, I actually know uh, the first uh, Virgin Galactic employee who was not a pilot uh, that got to fly up into space, and uh, she, I knew her. I know her pretty well, and so she's very. She was very pleased by the experience. It was wonderful, uh, even though the actual time in space was only a few minutes. Uh, you know, she got to see the curvature of the Earth. She got to see how beautiful the Earth looks, even from the lower lower uh, altitudes that she was at, around, you know, around 55 miles as opposed to about 280 miles up on the space station. You mentioned how much training astronauts and obviously passengers that go need. I'm sure the tr there won't be as much training as this becomes more popular. What's the necessity of that kind of tra training as people are blasting off into space? I think the minimum training anyone will ever uh, get to will be, okay, you have to know how to take care of yourself. You have to know how your spacesuit operates. You need to know what to do in an emergency, how to close up your, you know, if you've got visors open or anything, how to close everything up, turn your oxygen flow on, um, you know, and, and if you're, if you're no kidding, a passenger, then just listen to instructions, you know, and, and so I think the training could be, you know, fairly minimal, but you'd have to be able, able to at least take care of yourself and follow instructions. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, the price tag is a little scary, possibly $60 million. <laughs> All right. Always a pleasure talking to you. Please come back. Former NASA astronaut, friend of the show, Leroy Chow. Thank you so much, Leroy.